important was to remember who it is that is doing this or experiencing this or perceiving this, not the story-based entity, not thinking, okay, I'm John Smith and I'm eating an apple. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> Now, John Smith is eating an apple at this moment. <laughs> no, to sense that which knows, that which is aware, that in you that is aware that there is eating at this moment. So there's awareness of something, and at the same time, self-awareness of the deepest sense of I. And so that is in any, whether you're eating an apple, watching a tree, engaged in some kind of action or activity, or watching an inner feeling. There's always the manifested and the, one could say, the unmanifested. The, we called it sometimes the background and the foreground. In the foreground is what happens. In the background is the field, the I am, the deepest I am, in which whatever happens is happening. Now it can happen that the background, that what we call here the background or the ground, which we could call being, the ground of being, it can happen that that ground is so intensely felt, realized, that what is what is occurring, one could almost say, is a shift. And this is how a deeply awakened being experiences the world. And that shift is what, as you are just awakening, what is foreground becomes the background. And that which you perceived as the background as you were awakening becomes so, it's realized in its vastness that that becomes the foreground. In other words, your sense of beingness, the spacious field of presence, is so vast and all fulfilling that whatever is happening is just a little, sometimes call, I call it a ripple on the surface of the ocean, is the event. And you feel your own being or being so strongly that that occupies the entire foreground. <laughs> and any event is a background a little background event. <laughs> and so that is from that place certain Indian teachers say the world is unreal. It's absurd if we take that as a philosophical proposition and then start believing in it. It doesn't make sense. You can claim a hundred times that the world is unreal but the next moment something happens and you react. So where is the unreality of the world if the world upsets you so much? <laughs> it was only an idea in the head. But they talk from that place where to them whatever happens is like a, a dreamlike structure. They can see how quickly it appears, how quickly it disappears. Any event, anything is fleeting. Of course it is. Right now you are here in another now, on the same date, totally different surroundings, this has dissolved already. <laughs> Gone. What hasn't dissolved is that which 
is aware. So some Indian teachers then from that place where the vastness of the sense of I am or beingness or presence, the stillness, could say, is so vast, the I alive stillness, that that is, becomes the foreground and any events become the background. But for many of you, as this is beginning to emerge, it could be better described as you sense it already coming in in the background. And that's wonderful. It's, it's more than most human beings on this planet now or in the past ever experienced. It's still it's a wonderful thing. And it's from that place of the background having become the foreground that Jesus could say, I have overcome the world. And it's from that place, perhaps also, that Krishnamurti, once in a talk, he was already quite old, said to his audience, do you want to know my secret? And they'd been coming for 30 years waiting for the secret. And they all said, yes, please. Okay, here it is, he said. I don't mind what happens. Thank <laughs> you.